I know, baby steps, Anthony, baby steps. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I listened this time. <laughs> so, Minimax. Two years ago, like we said, in the final here, Archie Kitching and Ollie Stevens were victorious. There's your outside front row starter, number 47, Scott Marsh. Looking back down the outside of the row of the grid, Harrison Crowther, Blake Tyser, the 36, Aaron Fall, just getting himself settled in his XL Motorsport number six machine. Team boss Dan Holland behind them, just walking away there. Probably to put his mask on. Mm. So there is Scott Marsh settling himself into the cart that will start second. Ethan Jeff Hall, the championship leader uh, at the moment, uh, after winning a, in dominant fashion the pre final earlier on, will start from pole position for Strawberry Racing. Strawberry, believe it or not, after taking the Minimax title 10 years ago with George Russell and then a few years after that with Jensen Butterfield, since the start of the 2019, they've never won a Minimax final until now. Mm. Coles Racing have won seven of these in the last two and a half years. Vision Motorsport have taken three. Dan Holland have taken three. All with uh, Harry Linden. Vision Motorsport have won three of these with Jez Williams. But uh, the most successful driver in this class the last two years, Archie Kitching. Four wins and five runner-up finishes. So very, very successful. All for Coles Racing. So Coles, they really know how to get these Minimax races done. Hmm. And uh, so there is your pole sitter, number 12, Ethan Jeff Hall. His mechanic, Lee Taylor, sitting, standing just behind him. There is Mackenzie Douglas. Uh, for Coles Racing, another driver from my neck of the woods in South Wales, Cowbridge, Cowbridge, Cowbridge. Uh, Mackenzie, the posh bit of South Wales. Of course, Mackenzie Douglas, he had his penalty, of yes. course, when he finished there, but because he was so far ahead in third, he didn't yep. lose any position. So, yes, yes he's, he's, a, he's a very lucky boy. Uh, there's Mackenzie's dad, Andrew Douglas, uh, mechanicking for Mackenzie. Having a look down now, Eve. I, I mean, fair play to, to Lee Taylor and car mechanic Bingo. He's, we're not going to get any winners this weekend because there's no sunglasses. But I mean, he's got the earpiece, he's got the apron. Mm -hmm. you know, he's, got, he's got the team apron. That's uh, not bad for car mechanic Bingo. Um, so we might have it there with Argenti. Oh, but there's no sunglasses. No, 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 no. I mean, there's the number. That's uh, the KR Sport number 49 of Adam Wooden there. There's the, the Vision Motorsport number 33, uh, 32 of Mikey Walker. There's Aaron Fall. The 36 of Blake Ticehurst. All these drivers, great, great footage here. Just watching the drivers sitting, focusing, waiting. Now, uh, Ian, Ethan Jeff Hall's dad is watching from Iraq. Ah. Oh, well, well, I mean, he, he's working out there, isn't he? Mm. Yeah, sorting him out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he's working. You know, do it a bit. Pay for Ethan's racing. So you do it. That is warmer out there than it is here. Oh, it's, about, it's a lot. It's quite chilly here, isn't it? <laughs> but here's <laughs> the grid. Yes. For the Minimax final. Starting on pole position. Ethan, Ethan Jeff Hall. Ethan Jeff Hall. With, uh, Dad Polibay. will be happy. Yes. All the way from Baghdad. Then it is Scott Marsh, Mackenzie Douglas and Harrison Crowther. Chase Fernandez, Blake Ticehurst, Levi Earl and Aaron Full. Running up row number four. And then it's Charles Green, Reg Haywood. He ran well, then fell back in the pre-final. Ben Crossley and Mikey Walker. Freddie Warlock, Ewan Charman, Thomas Behrman and William Ray round out the seventh and eighth row. Ollie Wise, Adam Wooden, Leighton Cooper, who comes second in the championship heading into this weekend, and Callum Ghosh round out your top 20. And there is Joe Anderson starting 21st on his Vera Tools Motorsport UK British Kart Championship debut. Excellent. They round turn four. The clouds are still darkening. Now I was looking at my weather application. Yes. And it said, What was your application saying? It said, At three o'clock, the heavens shall open. Indeed. Ah, and deposit their contents upon us. Indeed. Lovely. Can't wait. I'm still looking. My uh, results runner has. We, we're out of grids. Anthony, we're out of grids. I bring unpaid child labour here and they <laughs> go and get lunch at the wrong time. Anyway, here we go. Lights are out. We're off and racing. Oh, it's a big crash. And that's a nasty one. That is the number 32 of Mikey Walker up and out of his cart. It, it hit the barriers. What, Mikey, get back. If it's, if it's rolling, go, son. 
Let's have a look. Are they going to get the Battenberg flag out? There's a yet no it's wave yellows outside hangar corner. There's no damage to the barriers. Well, He's got fair going. play. Yeah. There he goes. He gets thrown out of his cart. He checks it over and gets back in to go racing. Well done, Mikey Walker. That is a brave, brave young man, ladies and gentlemen. I hope that cart's not too badly damaged, although judging by its trajectory as it left uh, turn one, I've got a feeling there's a track rod or two that may be somewhat damaged. But, Anthony, up at the front, Ethan Jeff Hall, let's have a quick look and see if we can find out what happened. It's the back right-hand side of your screen, not this one, the next camera shot there, and you can see him into the... Oh, now, where was he starting? He was starting on the outside of row six. So we had you and Charman right behind him, then William Ray, and he just got catapulted out of his cart. And one thing I'll say is that championship footballers, please take note. Yes, or premiership footballers, or, or any premiership, footballers. Any footballer. That is it. Now, we've got, a, we've got a Coles racing cart retiring from the race. Mikey Walker is carrying on. Uh, that is Blake Ticehurst in the number 36 Coles cart uh, coming in. Now, he started six, so terrible look for Blake Ticehurst out of the final. Up at the front, change of lead, and it's Mackenzie Douglas who passes uh, Ethan Jeff Hall for top spot, the top three have got a bit of a breakaway. Douglas's Coles Racing teammate, number seven, Harrison Crowther, is there in third position. Harrison, the championship leader, coming into this weekend. Douglas, he got excluded at Clay Pigeon, so he's stone last in the point standings. His season effectively starts today. It does indeed. You can see there Mackenzie Douglas all side by side scrapping action with Harrison Crowther there in second place. Now Douglas, of course, he received his five second time penalty in the pre-final, managed to hold on to that third place. And as you can see right now, that was incredibly lucky because now he is leading the final here in Minimax. It is great to see. It's been Ethan Jeff Hall winning every single race so far this weekend. Can he make it? Four out of four and take that final as well. Mackenzie Douglas, though, is making that incredibly hard for him. Into the dog leg we go. Out on that start finish straight. You can see how close the carts get to those like inflatable barriers on the outside. And there's Ethan Jeff Hall, wheel to wheel for P2. And he squeezes Harrison Crowther just out and takes over second spot. Mackenzie Douglas now trying to pull away through the complex out onto mini straight. Scott Marsh, meanwhile, uh, has uh, started second, has dropped back to fourth place, and he's set a fastest lap, but he's got to get his head down and try it. There's the number 47 just flashing across your, your screen now. He's got to get up there, and he's got Levi Earl in the number 11 cart, and then Chase Fernandez in the number 90 cart right behind him. Aaron Fool is seventh, Reg Hayward is eighth, Thomas Behrman up to ninth, followed by William Ray in tenth, Charles Green 11th, Ewan Charman is 12th, Adam Wooden, Leighton Cooper, Callum Ghosh, Ollie Wise, Freddie Warlock, Joe Anderson and Mikey Walker all still running now. Ben Crossley didn't take the start, so uh, we didn't see him er earlier on either. Uh, no, where, oh, Ben Crossley, I think may maybe Ben Crossley was starting alongside Mikey Walker. Ah, okay. So now we're maybe getting uh, uh, two and two put together. So uh, Mikey Walker having that accident at the start, maybe a bit of wheel to wheel contact as the drivers came to the line between uh, Crossley and Walker uh, had a problem, made a, you know finished off Crossley's cart and uh, sent Mikey Walker into the barriers. We'll have to wait and see if that uh, rings true. But Mackenzie Douglas continues to lead the way. Exactly that. So plenty of time remaining on the clock. Just over 10 minutes plus that one additional lap. We are five laps into this race. And Mackenzie Douglas still leading the way by six Ooh. tenths of a second. Croker, though with a warning flag yeah. there in third place. Not sure what it, that is for, but Ethan Jeff Hall is back up into second place now and wanting to close in on that. Hopefully, you would expect Jeff Hall and Crowther to work together. No to tell, eight working against four is better. Of yep. course, Adam Wooden, though, fastest lap of the race in the number 49. Hey, well done, it? Adam Wooden. The KR Sport number 49, 12th position. Yep. Good lad. Running well. Um, Harrison Crowther, see, not what shows he's trying. Getting a warning flag shows he's trying. Yeah, exactly and that. Here, they, here come the, the midfield pack, and look at that. That's oh, the, down yeah, towards that's the tail a... of the field. That's a good scrap going on. And there's the number 11 cart, Levi Earl, who I think has just been passed by Chase Fernandez. Yes, yeah, so Fernandez, uh, in the number 90 vision cart, has just passed his teammate, Levi Earl. Now, looking, Chase Fernandez, 10th in the championship. Levi Earl, 8th in the championship. You know, that's good, good, solid performances from these two. Hmm. 
It is indeed. But, but, they are beginning to fall away a little bit from Scott Marsh. Scott Marsh is on his own. He's getting his head down. The gap between the top three and Marsh in fourth, it's 1.3 seconds at the start of this lap gone out a little bit now and Ethan Jeff Hall closing back in on Mackenzie Douglas uh, as Ethan Jeff Hall and uh, Harrison Crowther battled about two laps ago Douglas pulled out about six or seven cart lengths that is down to about one cart length now yep exactly that so less than that oh yeah definitely no so. cart lengths no cart lengths between the two of them now is there so out of the slipstream comes Ethan Jeff Hall sideways under braking perfectly timed Gets that move done, moves up to first, lost no time there, did either driver, but they are still scrapping away. Now they go side by side, the two Coles racing carts are side by side. So it's uh, Douglas and Crowther now, side by side. Can they get through? No, slotting back into position, but a great running from these three at the moment. Again, not losing time, still plenty of time left. Uh, and they're now just probably going to work together, move away, and we'll start seeing another scrap with about three minutes to go. Yep, yep. I've called so it. Yep, yep. Well, okay. So the, the, that all depends on whether the teammates work together. You know, that Ethan Jeff Hall, he won in the dry yesterday. He won in the damp this morning. It's dry again. What have Douglas and Crowther and what have their Coles racing team learned? Oh, here we go. Oh, Douglas is thinking, no, we've, we've seen Ethan Jeff Hall pull away from us in the dry, so we're going to draw him into a battle if we can. Yeah. You know, these, this great, two really long straights to get the slipstream here at Mansell Raceway. And uh, that is just inviting, uh, too inviting them. And in fact, so, so Ethan Jeff Hall's lost a couple of cart lengths there. These three, if they battle around too much, already Marsh, the gap was one and a half seconds a lap ago. It's down to 1.1 seconds now. So the Dan Holland Racing number 47, Scott Marsh, isn't out of this one yet. Then it's the two Vision Racing teammates. Uh, the, weather, the rain is due to reappear in about, well, according to your weather application, Anthony. Which isn't very good. It was supposed to be here in about 10 minutes. Looking out of the commentary box window, the cloud has actually lifted ever so slightly. So I think we could be in for a dry afternoon. Well, let's hope so. Despite what the weather was saying earlier on, it was saying yellow weather warnings for rain and gale force winds and that's not appeared so it just shows that you can't trust the weather at all can you william ray in cart number 14 just picking up a position there here are your top three out of turn four into turn number five and again marsh is inching inching towards the rain will start in four minutes apparently somebody else showing me their weather application oh dear me Weather app roulette. Weather app roulette. I am going to hook my peepers on the window and my weather application, my two weather applicators, uh, known as my eyeballs, say there's no yeah, rain yet, but there is a change of the race lead, Anthony. There is indeed. The number seven of Crowther gets to the lead. Ethan Jeff Hall follows suit, and the number four of Douglas goes back into third place, albeit trying to get past Ethan Jeff Hall once more, but can't quite do it. So again, these three are scrapping away. Like you said, obviously, Ethan Jeff Hall has broken away many, many, many times, and they are refusing that to happen this time around. I said we'd, we won't see a battle until about two minutes ago. I'm completely lying there, because it's <laughs> going to be a battle all the way through this six minutes, I suspect. Telling Porky Pies. Now, Chase Fernandez has pulled a bit of a gap on his teammate Levi Earl in the scrap for fifth position. So Fernandez, you know, solidifying uh, that position at the moment, Earl 6, Fall 7, Charman 8, Hayward 9th, Wooden 10, uh, then Behrman, Cooper, Gauche, Ray, Wise, Anderson, Warlock, Green, and Mikey Walker still out there. Another change of lead. Ethan Jeff Hall back in front. This is good stuff here. And so far, not a sticker has been swapped. But now, okay, so Ethan Jeff Hall defending into the complex with five and a half minutes to go. We are on lap number 12. And they're gravitating towards the white lines at the inside of the track to defend and this is going to open the door for scott marsh and we've now in the space of three corners gone from a three cart battle for the lead to a four cart battle for the lead and oh, oh and there goes crowther nibbling his way up the inside of ethan jeff hall who falls from first to fourth at the notorious hanger corner it is indeed yeah you can see there fighting now is the 47 of scott marsh dan holland racing he set the fastest lap last time around he says think don't 
won't do it, but well, is he going to listen? Of course he's not. He's going for second place, says Ethan Jeff Hall. Moves back up a position. Warning flag, though, going out to Ethan Jeff Hall. Yep, I'm not quite... Well, he was... Well, OK. Um, maybe that was something before Hanger Corner. And, McKen and Mackenzie Douglas is now skidded away for about 10 cart lengths advantage. I have to say that the clouds do look a little bit dark <laughs> coming from that direction. The wind is coming that way. Maybe I was talking complete nonsense when I said I think the final's going to be, the rest of the day is going to be dry. So I wasn't telling Porky Pies. Would, would, wouldn't be the first time I've done it. <laughs> and it won't be the last. And uh, so, well, Chase Fernandez is 2.7 seconds off the race lead in cart number 90. Now there's been a brief reset uh, uh, after that uh, skirmish a lap ago. Douglas... Jeff Hall, Crowther, and Marsh. Then a gap to the two Vision teammates, Fernandez and Earl. Being very impressed by both those two drivers so far this uh, weekend. Of course, in the it was the weather was so bad at Clay Pigeon, we couldn't really get a, an idea of where the form book lay mm. because you know now we're having a you know we've had a, a this is this is the first real glimpse at who is strong in all types of conditions mm. here and the answer is that uh, Ethan Jeff Hall, Mackenzie Douglas who are both contenders there but also we've got the likes of Crowther, Marsh, Fernandez, Earl and uh, some of the drivers that did so well at Clay, the likes of uh, uh, Leighton Cooper and Ewan Charman struggling a little bit here, has to be said mm. Leighton now, Cooper in 12th place. The draft has worked brilliantly there for Ethan Jeff Hall. He's now back on the rear bumper of the race leader. Now, this lap, we're going to go again. Round the outside goes, Crowth, Crowth, goes Crowther. And uh, one of our cameramen is uh, say is now raining out on the circuit. I'm not sure at what circuit, because there's there be no beads of water on the glass just yet here. Well, we'll soon find out as they go through this. So the, the first sector of this lap... Uh, Scott Marsh set a purple sector, so it's not on the first sector. The second sector, there's drivers doing personal backs. The third sector, which is where they are now, may be a couple of spots. The times, well, we'll have to see. Looking okay so far. 48.57 is the fastest lap of the race so far as they cross the start-finish line. Well, I mean... Ethan Jeff holds the 48.59, so that's almost fast race, fast lap of the race pace. Mm. So it's not raining yet, but Mackenzie Douglas having to defend two and a half minutes to go, and look at the, look at the, uh, the, the team members and family members watching on. Of course, no spectators here; it's just team members and family members of the drivers. And oh, there goes Fernandez. So Fernandez has caught Crowther. Marsh has dropped back a little bit. Chase Fernandez; he's not out of the hunt running just yet in this hunt for a podium. No, he's not indeed. It's all still fighting away at the front there. It was four carts battling for the lead now. It's just two at the front. There's a bit of breathing space as the 47 of Scott Marsh is on his own uh, as they go through. And they'll cross the line now less than two minutes plus that one additional lap. There is your race leader, Mackenzie Douglas. He has got the number 12 of Ethan Jeff Hall and Scott Marsh still nose to tail right behind as they go through. No position changes this time around. Everyone's slotting into place. I suspect it will get to that last lap when they'll really Constantine are up. That's oh, where yes. we start to see the pin move. But you've got to remember as well is that you don't really want to be the leader right now because if that rain does start to come down, you're, you're going to be the first person to figure it out. You're the guinea pig. Well, yeah. looking down, the Mackenzie Douglas has got one second place finished in his Minimax career here at the Vera Tours British Kart Championship. And Scott Marsh in third position. And here comes Ethan Jeff Hall at the inside going to dog leg. He makes the move. That is power coming out of Hangar Bend there. That is real power. Uh, for that strawberry racing number 12 cart. Marsh to the outside. Marsh going to try and cut underneath the top two coming out of this corner now, but he can't. Oh, he's got a five-second oh, penalty no. for Scott Marsh. Oh, that's going to throw the cat amongst the pigeons. And look at Crowther. Crowther is all over that one, isn't he? Yeah, Ethan Jeff Hall. So that's a disaster for Scott Marsh with Dan Holland Racing. He won't see that yet because that notification came up when he was already past the start-finish line. He's going to see that. Oh, oh, that was Fernandez. Fernandez in the wall uh, in the number 90, and that's a disaster. I don't think he spun. Did I think he, he kept it going, yeah, though. Yeah, did he get, keep it going? Did he damage the cart? Well, let's have a little look. There is Levi Earl. There's Fernandez. So he's dropped two places. He's behind Earl, and he's behind Aaron Fall. But has he damaged the front end of that cart at all? Well, we'll have to find out when it comes to pending Paul Klassen. But at the moment, 
10 seconds plus that one lap. The clouds are moving in fast. There is Full trying to go down the inside of the number 11 of Levi Earl. Can't quite do it, stays behind. Timer clicks over to zero. Last lap boards out this time. Change for the lead, Scott Marsh. He may have a five second time penalty, but now he's in the lead. He's hoping that he can try and capitalize on this as much as possible, but I don't think it's gonna be oh, enough. Oh, look Crowther. at that. Harrison Crowther sent one in from a different postcode and his teammate, Mackenzie Douglas, had just taken over the effective lead of this race. And one corner later, his teammate almost torpedoes him. Ethan Jeff Hall has now got a great big gap and he's got Scott Marsh to get a good Slipstream off onto this straight as we start the final lap. Final lap time, yes, as you say, Henry, it's out now. On track, Scott Marsh leading the way, but he won't on paper. Ethan Jeff Hall is second, but is leading on the paper side of this race. In towards the complex section, goes to the outside, switch to the inside, slots through side by side. Don't get yourself caught in an accident because he's got a penalty. Just yep. stay there in second place because effectively you've got this in the bag, Ethan. Stay in second place. Well, the more that Marsh defends, the closer that Mackenzie Douglas gets to Ethan Jeff Hall. At the moment, Ethan Jeff Hall is winning this race, even though he's second on the road. Can Mackenzie Douglas and Cart number four capitalise on the fact that the leader who's going to get a penalty, Scott Marsh, is defending, defending, defending. I think Ethan Jeff Hall has just about got enough. I think he's got enough here as well. In towards Dogleg, final part of the track, out of the final corner. On track, Scott Marsh takes oh, check of play. He doesn't know. He, he doesn't think know. He knows. I don't think he knows, but he's got that five second time penalty. Ethan Jeff Hall crosses the line in second. Mackenzie Douglas in third. Harrison Crowther in fourth place. Oh. Now, of course, we do the interviews. Of course, with it being so windy and rainy, everything like that, we've got a new uh, form of what we're doing. So I think the driver is going to be coming up to the commentary box to talk to us. Lucky but, driver. But Ooh, lucky, yeah. To speak, gets to speak to him in the flesh in the commentary box. I know. So on track, Scott Marsh is your race winner. But the 47 did receive a five-second time penalty, which will put him all the way back into eight place oh. out on circuit. So, provisionally, Ethan Jeff Hall will uh, provisionally take the victory. Uh, Mackenzie Douglas second, then it's Harrison Crowther uh, third, Chase Fernandez fourth, Levi Earl fifth, sixth for Aaron Fall, seventh for Ewan Charman, eighth then would be Scott Marsh, ninth for Adam Wood, and Thomas Behrman takes home a top ten finish. Reg Hayward would be eleventh, then William Ray is twelfth, followed by Leighton Cooper, Callum Ghosh, Freddie Warlock, Ollie Wise, Joe Anderson, Charles Green, Mikey Walker made it to the finish of that race. I've never seen a driver get physically thrown out of their cart on the start, pick himself up off the tarmac, get back into his cart and finish a race. Well done, Mikey Walker, driver number 32. Sadly, Blake Tyshurst and Ben Crossley failed to finish. And now, oh, when will Scott Marsh get the news that he has got a five second penalty? I would imagine it's gonna be uh, pretty soon thereafter uh, as we head in, as the drivers head into the uh, pit lane area. Uh, now, where is Will Davis, our media man? Will, Will. That's uh, <laughs> from a, a TV show, that is, or is film. It? That's from ET, I believe. Oh, right, yes, of course. So I will uh, try not to destroy the backdrop here in, in the commentary box, and I will exit stage left very shortly so that you may. Uh, there is poor old Ben Casley's cart being dragged back to Ben Crossley's. Ben, ben Casey. No, Ben Casey has to go back up the road. Ben Crossley, I do apologise. Do you know what? I've, 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 I've turned into you, Anthony. I'm getting all <laughs> the names wrong this weekend, including yours. I know mine, I think, just about. Um, the next race, ladies and gentlemen, will be Rotax 177. I haven't got a grid for that at the moment. Well, I can do you one better. Oh, you can bring it up on well. your wheels on your screen but we're going to uh, have a word from our sponsors at the moment and then we'll be back with hopefully speaking to the winner of the Minimax final <laughs>
Well, yes, you join us for the first time in the commentary box here talking to our drivers. The weather is quite horrible outside. The banners are going everywhere. So we'll have a chat in here. Now, race winner on track, but I'm not sure it's going to be on paper, but a fantastic showing from yourself, Scott Marsh. A great result for you in terms of positions on track, but what a tough race that was. Yeah, it was really close, especially at the beginning when we didn't quite have the pace. So, but they started scrapping, we managed to get to them. We did one after another, and then just on the last lap, I think it was. No, on the second to last lap, we just sent the lunge in, and then just managed to just keep my whole position for the rest of the race. Yes, of course, as well, uh, battling away there with Ethan Jeff Hall. Uh, you know, it was, a, again, a tough race, the conditions as well, closing in. Um, did it start raining out there, or, or, or was it just, it was fine? No, not what I could see. Not that you could see. Ah, OK, so we were, we were getting told in our ears that the rain was coming down, but no, there you go, you confirmed it. No rain as of yet. Uh, but yeah, a, a fantastic race for yourself and um, it's just a shame about the penalty on that yeah. one. But it, it happens, it racing, it just shows that you've got the pace, it shows that you've got the skills to get up to that sharp end of I the I mean, spectrum. there's always next time. So. There is always next time. That is excellent to say. Excellent to say. Well, again, very well done. Tough break on this one, but we'll see you at the next round. Thank you. Spot on. Well, uh, we shall take a, uh, another quick break now and we will get ready for the next race that will be heading out onto the circuit in just a moment, which will, of course, be Rotax 177. Awesome. Good well done. your sadness in this world till you feel mine and change as in your body. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the podium presentation for the Minimax class, the second round of the Vera Tools Motorsport UK British Car Championships at Mansell Raceway. I'd like to welcome up onto the podium your leading rookie and finishing third overall, it's Chase Fernandez. Chase finished 2.16 seconds behind the top two. And uh, starting top five, it's his first ever British Kart Championship podium. Congratulations. And now, in a race that was exciting from start to finish, finishing in second position, his best ever finish in the British Kart Championships, equaling that, it's Mackenzie Douglas. He's, he's from Cowbridge, he's from Cowbridge and Panath. So, same. But your winner uh, is Mechanic. The winning Mechanic, Lee Taylor, is not here. But the winner, second win of the season for Strawberry Racing's Ethan Jeff Hall. So the drivers will have their official championship photographs from Chris Walker at cartpicks.net. And uh, Ethan will get his mechanics winning trophy as well to give to Lee Taylor. And uh, a great result. Ethan's dad was watching that final from Iraq, which is something. <laughs> 